What is up, you evil villains? It's your boy, Luis Torres, and today, ah, I get to try out the Armored Amplification 50 Watt Sabo, uh, which is manufactured in good old sunny Florida by AJ Hudman. And, you know, little things that you'll pick up on is the fact that, you know, it's, it's kind of military-based with the with little details like Armored Amplification, which is the name of his company. Uh, Sabo is actually, and I will read it to you. Uh, it's actually called the M829. It's an American armor piercing, thin stabilized, discarding Sabo tank round. And it is gigantic. Here's a pretty girl holding one. And it's absolutely huge, this thing. So uh, if you ever get the chance to go to, you, you know, just YouTube uh, the Sabo round, and you'll see what that looks like. So this video is gonna be a lot longer than what you're used to, uh, and that's because I'm gonna go through all the details um, of each individual knob. I'll play for a bit first, and then towards the end, I'll go over the owner's manual, so you get to see what the toggles do and all the different various uh, uh, options that you have with this head. I'm actually gonna be using my 1987 ESP M1 Custom neck through body using a it's just a bridge pickup it's a seymour duncan black winter pickup uh one that i installed just a couple of weeks ago so the one th there's a few things with this amp that you need to know up front first for being such a high gain amp it's really quiet i mean my paul reed smith mt15 you want to kick in the nuts because it's just noisy. This is significantly louder with much more gain uh, and quiet in comparison. You still hear a little hiss, but that's just any high gain amp when you have the, the gain cranked. Uh, also, I am literally just plugged from my guitar right into the head, literally. Here's my cable and just plugged right in, right in, that's it. That's it, that's all you need. It, I mean, should you have a noise gate? I think everyone should, depending on how you play. If you play, you know, fast and play with a lot of staccato picking. Um, for the most part, all day today, since uh, it came in from Florida, I haven't, I haven't used any of my noise gates. Don't need it, don't think I need it. Um, and the gain, is ridiculous so speaking to Mike Hasty from Walls of Jericho earlier today uh, because I was posting you know my little videos and uh, kind of letting every, you know warming everyone up to the fact that it's coming today um, and he reached out to me after I had posted that short little clip that I'm sure you guys wanted to punch me in the nuts for uh, <laughs> where I'm just you know playing a little peekaboo um, so he reached out to me and he's like Yo, legit, like, what would you compare it to? And this is before I play. You guys need to understand that I clearly have a bunch of amps at my disposal. The only things that I can compare it to are four, if they're all together, which I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So a lot of the amps that we buy, the problem that a lot of people have is are you going to spend $2,000 on a dual rectifier or $2,200 for a triple rectifier and then realize, what do you mean I have to add a boost pedal to it? So, you know, that's just how it is. That's how, that's how it is, my man. Um, but the Sabo is like a different animal. So I feel in one sense, it's the Mesa rectifier foundation, right? Where you need an amp to have that brutal growl that you, you you need that solid foundation where that your tone eventually pulls from right so i explained that you know think of the mesa rectifier because he has a bunch um and then i said add the evh 5150 as far as the gain stage goes because the evh 5150 Three, um, whether you're using the 6L6 or the EL34, the gain stage is ridiculous. It is 
I can't I can't say it's too much gain because yo know, there's just not there's never too much gain with the EVH there's too much gain not that it's bad but it's just that you don't have to crank it you know so with the rectifier you kind of have to crank the gain so Mesa rectifier on one day on one end right as far as the foundation goes with the EVH 5153 you know let's let's throw in the PV6505 also because they're they're similar then throw in a boost pedal okay you need a boost in there so this is what the Sabo pulls out so rectifier EVH PV 5150 with a boost pedal and if you've ever used a VFE uh, standout where you have access to the high and low frequency um, think of it along the lines of a TC Electronics integrated preamp uh, or the Pepper's Dirty Tree where you have access to this high low filtering um, and it has it all built in dude it is insane and it's an amp that I've never yeah, I've never used an amp that's even remotely close to this uh, where you don't need a noise gate you don't need a boost you don't need a high low filtering pedal uh, it's it's literally everything in one box and the good thing it's not gonna cost you 3500 speaking to AJ uh, the owner of uh, armored amplification his turnaround time build wise is a month and a half to two months okay so think about that handmade in the United States one and a half to two month turnaround time um, from order to you receiving um, your head so that's great considering that there are some companies that you know you're on the back burner for eight months 12 months uh, one of my boys who I shall remain nameless um, you know he's been waiting for his amp for almost a year and it is a huge boutique company and that's what that's what it is you know at some point I would imagine that armored amplification will have so many orders especially at the price range that he's selling these for uh, for so this is actually gonna run 1400 with 50 shipping so let's call it an even 1450 shipped again handmade in the United States and if you remove buying something like a high uh, low filter pedal like the VFE you're saving 250 there right because you don't need it and how much are boosts popular boosts are 250 mediocre not I don't want to say mediocre you know anything less than that is 200 um, so let's call it an even 400 just to throw a number out there um, at 1450 you're literally saving the 400 from not having to buy these pedals or better yet if you have them you can actually sell them and completely be fine like if I had this amp just the armored amplification head I would probably get rid of a lot of pedals because I wouldn't need them um, so think of that discount uh, angle if you will so then there is um, just the size you know it doesn't weigh 10,000 pounds you know it's it for the most part my Randall RG 303 is a solid state so clearly there's a lot less bulky heavy um, components inside the armored amplification Sabo weighs as much as that um, so it's relatively light compared to a Marshall JCM 800 any of the rectifiers my stiletto um, it's my Diablo it's 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 really light uh, which is great and so you're not gonna run into those situations where you're going to want to trade away because it's so heavy like it's literally the perfect you know if you have a 5150 uh, an EVH 5153 it's it's in that ballpark uh, the only thing lighter than that would probably be my Paul Reed Smith MT 15 and that's just 15 watts you know pushing 35 watts uh, to some degree now the kicker that got me laughing when I was talking to AJ is the fact that the amp you have a uh, a, a very X stage in the back so it's 50 watts 35 watts 
20 watts, 10 watts. Yo, think about that. Think about that. Think about you buying any 50 watt amp. You know, sometimes they'll drop down to 25 watts. This goes down to 10. Um, not to say that 10 watts is a bedroom level kind of sound, you know, as far as dBs go, um, but it's a lot lower and your significant other and your neighbors aren't gonna want to smash your front door and kick your teeth in. So, um, so without further ado, wow, I'm already at 10 and a half minutes. <sighs> Told you this was gonna be long. Uh, I'll, I'll actually put in the video that if you, you can actually go ahead and just skip everything to, you know, where I actually play. So I'm gonna play first for a few minutes, then I'm actually going to put my camera in front of the head and play as I tweak the knobs. So stay tuned, be right back. That's as noisy as it gets. Really low, considering that it's a 50 watt, super high gain aim.
I am back. So hopefully you completely love the different options that you have um, with this head. Uh, what I want to go over right now is the fact that in this recording, I actually use two separate mics simultaneously. One is an Asden uh, SGM PD2, uh, which captured the ambient tone uh, from about 12 feet away from the um, Marshall uh, JCM 900, 1936, 212 cabinet loaded with Celestian V30s. And the other mic is a Shure SM57, which is pointing at the cone and is about a foot and, away, uh, a, foot and a half away from the actual speaker itself. Um, I'm not recording necessarily into a track. Um, I just wanted to capture what it naturally sounds like. Um, so after this segment, I will actually go ahead and um, record with each speaker separately so you can hear what it sounds like on the Asden SM50 um, uh, SGM PD2 and separately with the Shure SM57. Now we're gonna go over some of the little details that are covered in this head. And I'll just go over it really quick. Power, you know, standby, you know, resonance, adjust the low end content uh, allowed in the power amp. Attack, so there's an actual attack um, knob that's between the presence and the resonance. And that controls the amount of negative feedback allowed into the amplifier. Start at noon and adjust up for more modern tone. Presence, you know, Master, you know, uh, bass, middle, treble, you know, gain two controls the amount of mid to low distortion. The higher the setting, the more distortion set to noon and adjust accordingly. Gain one controls the amount of mid to high distortion. That's when I mentioned the high low filter. Um, it comes from the gain one and gain two. Uh, so gain one controls the amount of mid to high and the gain two controls the mid to low. Then the switches, there are four toggle switches that you can play around with. One is bright, self-explanatory, you know, you probably have an amp that has a bright switch. If not, this switch, this switch <laughs> introduces a small bypass capacitor to compensate for dark sounding pickups or provide a more aggressive attack. The next toggle is the grit, and that's a three-way switch. In the up position, the traditional Jose clipping is engaged. The center deactivates all clipping modes. The last is the downward position, and that's the custom uh, design clipping mode that uh, AJ uh, calls the Phoenix. The next one, the third toggle, is called the body. This changes the tonal character of the preamp. Switch to taste for more or less uh, low mid to high mid content. And the last is called the sizzle, which adds a bypass capacitor to the NFP to change the high content of the preamp switch to taste. That is it, my friends. Um, but like I said, you know, it's one of those amps that has so many options and even telling AJ, I'm just like, it, there's just so much, there's so many flavors in there that, you know, within 25 minutes of me having used this head earlier today, um, what I found myself realizing, and keep in mind, I have a bunch of amps, right? I mean, consider the fact that the Mesa rectifier, they call uh, a one trick pony. There's a reason why they call it a one trick pony because you buy a rectifier, you get your, you, you fine tune your heavy tone and that's it. If you try to step away from that tone, you're literally going from, for the most part, there's that, there's a rectifier sound, right? Everyone gets it for that same sound. But if you try to change it, you literally will go from a good tone to, ah, that's terrible. What is that? Um, and lots of other amps are exactly the same way. But interestingly enough, with the Sabo, I found that, you know, within 10 minutes, I was literally able to find my tone. Because to me, you know, AJ was just like, hey, let me send you some tips on how to use it. And I was just like, 
AJ, you know, I love you, but you know, for me, I was just like, yes, I appreciate your pointers. I need to find my tone because every amp is different and it's a tonal thing. Um, like the JCM 800 versus a rectifier, yo, they're different. You can't say, Hey, do this to, and expect that it's going to sound the same with that. So I was just like, all right, you know, he, he gave me pointers. Uh, I remembered, I actually went through them before I, um, I broke open the, uh, the box. So I was like, okay, but none of it made sense to me because I hadn't actually played around with the knobs yet. So instead of probably driving myself crazy, I was just like, let me just, you know, wipe the slate clean. Uh, let me just go ahead and find it. So I'm playing with his, playing with the toggle. You know, I, I had to keep in mind what the toggles were. Um, and then I found my tone and I was like, oh, you know, like while I was finding my tone, I found other cool tones and I was like, okay, let me see if I can change it around. I'm telling you within 10 minutes, I found another amazing tone that had nothing to do with what I find and look for in my own personal tone. So I was just like, oh, look at that. That's awesome that you can actually create something else that sounds really good, not my style, but still good. You know, even if you were to use it as a, as a second track in a, in a song, you can totally use that. You know, so it was in the ballpark, but typically if you change your EQ, it's, you know, you ruin it to, you know, to, to a major degree. Then I found a third and the third one was more along the lines of like, of that black metal tone where you want to have um, lower accents because you're going to end up using um, a Boss HM2, you know, chainsaw crazy pedal. So what I ended up doing was changing the gain one and gain, and gain two stage. So that way, it's almost like, like I was mimicking the Boss HM2 and I was just like, ah, dude, black metal guitarist would love even this tone. I'm like, all right, I get it, you know. Uh, and then I found a fourth tone. And again, these are tones that I have mine. I found three other ones, not necessarily that I would use, but you know, I'm reviewing, I'm reviewing this head and I'm trying to see like, all right, does it, is it a one trick pony? Uh, because a lot of these amps are the JCM 800 is a one trick pony. The Randall Diablo is a one trick pony. The rectifiers are the, you know, even my, uh, what the heck is that one? My stiletto. I was going to call it a Diablo. I'm like, that's the Diablo. Anyway, um, but those are one trick ponies, like legit, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to kid around, dude. They totally are. Um, but with the Sabo, like there's so many different odds and ends. Yo, listen, I had my Randall say in forever. Yo, and I thought, I remember saying, uh, even in my other videos, like, dude, there's a lot of tones that you can find and pick. This thing kills the Randall Satan. Um, so, I mean, I'll even go as far as to say, if you're looking for Randall Satan, get the armored Sabo. Uh, I just think that you'll get more out of it. Not to say that you're going to use it, but if you want to create a different tone, they are there and they're really good. You know, that I think that's really the big kicker is how good is it? It's good. It's good enough that even I was, you know, shocked. I was just like, oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, you, again, you never really find that as an option in most amps. Uh, and yet this one, I was actually able to find a few. So uh, again, you know, if you're one of those guys that want different tones, you know, if you want clean, you're probably not going to get clean out of it because uh, it's kind of a metal focused amp. Um, but you know, for anyone else, you know, if you're like me and you're just about the brutal tones, that thing for days, are you kidding me? And at 1450, what, you know, it's a discount, you know, you can, you, how many amps are out there that are boutique companies, you know, not to say that he's, that AJ isn't going to eventually start charging 2,500 and 2,800 for, for his, uh, for his amps, but I feel like some companies right out of the rip, they were like, yo, 3,000, 3.33 and 33 cents. Come on, son, bro. Are you serious? 3,500 for an amp that's a Jose mod? Yo, that's a lot of money, bro, <laughs> you know? 
uh, that, that's a, those are, that, that's a bunch of ESPs that you can buy. That's just on one head. You could buy a few ESPs with that amount of money. Um, but for 1450, dude, handmade in the U S what by a, a, a military veteran, uh, who's in the air force. Come on, son. You can't mess around with that for, for at, at all ever. Um, so, you know, I'll put a link below for the armored amplification, uh, website. Now we're going to the next phase, which is me recording strictly using one mic versus the next mic. So mic number one is going to be this SM57 that I have down here that again is about a foot and a half from the V30 um, speaker in my Marshall 1936-212 cabinet. Then the other one is going to be the Asden SGM PD2, um, which is a condenser mic. It's a shotgun condenser mic, and that's about 12 feet back. So you get to hear the tone that I was capturing earlier is a combination of these two mics, but this way you get to hear each one separately. Uh, and the shotgun mic, I actually have it pointed 12 feet away from the speaker, but it's a shotgun mic. It actually literally focuses uh, and picks up any tone that's directly ahead of it uh, up to 15 feet. So, all right, guys, I will be back. For all the girls I've loved before. all the girls I've loved before. I am back and hopefully you guys appreciated the time that it took to create this 35 minute <laughs> review. Uh, I think it's well worth it. It's such a great amp. It really is. Um, again, it's one of those things where, you know, if you want options, if you want something new, if you want something dynamic, if you want something that's going to save you from having a giant pedal board trying to find your tone, um, this is it, you know, this is a game changer. 
Uh, and it's interesting because I ended up getting it and I took a few photos of it and posted it on Facebook, Instagram. And I didn't realize that AJ was just waiting. Basically, he's like, dude, what do you think? And turned it on, played around with it. You know, I, it must have been like 30, 40 minutes later, I look at my phone and I realize that AJ was like, tell me what you think about it. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, you're a genius. You are a genius, my friend. AJ Hudman is a genius. He literally created the future of metal amplifiers because everyone uses old gear. Yo, even I use old gear because the new gear is so expensive. Um, you know, like, dude, you know, some of these companies are crazy. They think like everyone's wealthy, that everyone has all this money set aside, you know, that, that we have, that everyone has this disposable income to buy, you know, a $3,000 to $4,000 amp. And it's just like this guy at $1,450 just broke the bank, bro. Like, you know, not to say that there's a certain competitor that just came out with a 20 watt that's literally $200, and I say $200 less, but what they don't tell you is you're gonna have to pay shipping from overseas for that 1250 along with taxes. You know what everything's gonna come out to? 1500 kids. For a 20 watt amp, enjoy your 20 your enjoy your 20 watt 1500 dollar amp that you can only play in your bedroom. Wah wah, oh so sad. <laughs> Except the fact that you are you know you have an American made amp that's legit hand built by AJ in Florida, and yo son he's military yo it's family right there you know what I'm saying. You know, if you don't look at military as family, there's something, there's something wrong with you. My brother, uh, my oldest brother retired from the military and on 9-11, when I'm in Manhattan trying to get away, he actually worked at the Pentagon. So, yo, like legit, if you're in the military, yo, you're family. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone has family in the military and that's how I look at AJ and Armored Amplification. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like legit, thank you. Like you don't understand. Like, like bro, I'm some poor kid from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? You know, the fact that I have all this crazy gear and a YouTube channel where I make guys laugh like when I'm doing my little peekaboo. I know you guys like that. Yo, I even had uh, uh, Jeremiah Augustine in Hawaii and he's like, son, what's up, kid? Yo, that was the fastest little review ever. Uh, <laughs> Jeremiah, you're awesome. Um, so, you know, it's this is long, but I appreciate that you guys watched it. And, you know, this is a game changer. Like, if it wasn't a game changer, I'd be like, what's up, guys? Yeah, this is the amp. Um, but it's, it. you know, I played it and was floored, like jaw to the ground. I was just like, yo, this is like, this is the future. Not like the future. This is the future of metal amplifiers, period. So... Uh, I'll put the link below for AJ's company, Armored Amplification. Check that out when you get the chance. Uh, he also makes pedals, which is awesome. I actually ordered a uh, one of his boost pedals. Uh, that should be coming. So I'm super excited about that. And, you know, hey, we're nearing 1,900 subscribers. Bro, that's crazy. But you guys are the best. Like, if I can make you guys laugh and you leave a note like, ah, that was really funny. I'm just like, yo, that's... Bro, that gives me chills, you know, like legit, I get, you know, goosebumps and I'm just like, all right, cool. You know, I'm doing my job. You know, if anything, reviews, making you guys laugh to me, that's everything. So thank you. You know, I really appreciate everything. You know, your comments, the time that you guys, you know, your, your, your message, the comments you leave, uh, you know, friending me on Facebook, on Instagram. I think that's awesome, you know, so thank you so much. And if you're new to the channel, hopefully you'll subscribe if you from time to time, just see what the heck uh, I posted and you realize that you haven't subscribed. What's up, kid? Hit that subscribe button. What's wrong with you? Urgh. So, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the absolute best. And as usual, I will talk to you guys soon.